I am excited uh, to, to be directing The Taming of the Shrew. This is my third attempt uh, to get it right. It is a comedy, of course. It's one of Shakespeare's best known comedies. And yet it's, it's often misunderstood. So very often we hear it's a battle of the sexes or it's a, a comedy of uh, man making his will known. And this is not that play at all. This is a comedy based literally on a love affair. Uh, it's a love story that we discover uh, the reason Kate has become uh, the way she is because of uh, a younger sister who has tyrannized the home upon the death of their mother. Kate has been relegated to the uh, to the role of, of uh, taking care of the house and uh, everything else is to take care of Bianca. I think it's kind of fun and audiences will get a, a glimpse of what makes Kate lash out as she has to put up with this dreadfully catered to and spoiled, arrogant younger sister. Uh, and Petruchio, uh, even though he says, I've come to wife it wealthily in Padua, we, we, we find it, he, that's not his reason at all. He doesn't need to come to, to, to Padua to find a wealthy wife. That's locker talk. He's come to Padua uh, to see if he can't find an intellectual equal an emotional equal, a spiritual equal. And uh, when they meet, the fireworks begin. And, and, and the excitement of that, of course, is very compelling, but it's surrounded by a, a, a ridiculousness almost with wonderful humor and wonderful uh, uh, idiocy on everyone else's part. But it's never idiocy with Petruchio and Catherine. There's, there's is a love story. It's a story of finding one another and really, and then testing one another to find out just how, just how much have they bitten off. Oh, I think people will love Shrew. I, I, I think they will love uh, uh, the color, the flavor, the excitement of it, uh, the humor. And it's a play for everybody. It is not a play for the intellectual. It's a play for the, the, for the groundling. Audiences will love it for that. Mm -hmm.